In September of 1939, Adolf Hitler's army invaded Poland, causing several nations to declare war on Germany. Over 30 countries, including Great Britain, France, the Soviet Union, and China, entered the fray against Germany, Italy, and Japan, but the United States remained neutral. America had been recovering from the Great Depression, which was marked by poverty, high unemployment, low profits, and low incomes. Two years later, on December 7, 1941, the Japanese military attacked the U.S. naval base in Pearl Harbor. Suddenly, America was plunged into the greatest war the world had ever seen, and American manufacturing was ready for it. In 1938, a metallurgist named Philip M. McKenna created a tungsten titanium carbide alloy that allowed for a huge productivity breakthrough in cutting tools for machining steel. These tools cut faster and lasted longer and saw a lot of action in the machinery, automotive, and aviation industries. This innovation came about just in time because America's manufacturing might was about to need every single edge it could find. In 1941, Ford Motors immediately halted production on all private passenger vehicles. They repurposed their River Rouge plant and began to produce aircraft engines and military vehicles like the M4 tank. Ford also built the one mile long Willow Run plant to produce the B-24 Liberator bomber and was able to produce hundreds of this aircraft every month. Chrysler plants began to produce Martin designs in the M3 and Sherman tanks, General Motors began to build aircraft, and pretty much the entire automotive industry switched over to building trucks, tanks, marine engines, guns, and shells. All of this increased production meant there was a huge need for new machine tools. Once again, American manufacturing was up to the challenge. More mills, lathes, and grinders were produced between 1940 and 1943 than in the previous 40 years combined. Cincinnati Milling Machine Company was producing a new machine tool every 17 minutes during the war. Bridgeport sold its 100,000th machine by 1948. The Davenport Screw Machine produced ammunitions five times faster than its German equivalent, utilizing five spindles rather than just one. By the beginning of 1944, American factories were able to output more than double what all of the Axis countries were able to produce combined. With the U.S. joining the war and America's increased production came other challenges. The supply chain was affected by embargoes and material shortages. With most able-bodied men fighting the war overseas, there was a skilled labor shortage and skills gap. Sound familiar? But rather than running to the store and buying toilet paper, Americans faced these challenges through further innovation. Most of us are familiar with granite surface plates and pretty much every machine shop has one. But before World War II, almost all surface plates were made from hand-scraped cast iron or steel. When steel and cast iron became critical for building the machines of war, an enterprising machinist went to a cemetery monument builder and asked their sculptor if he could make him a tombstone that was very flat on one face. This resulted in the formation of the Herman Stone Company, which perfected the technique for producing granite surface plates. And consider rubber. Most of our rubber supply came from Indonesia and Malaysia, which were seized by Japan in 1942. A military plane required 1,000 pounds of rubber, a tank, 2,000 pounds, and every single person in the military was issued over 30 pounds of gear that was made from rubber. So, several companies like Firestone and Goodyear teamed up to make synthetic rubber from petroleum byproducts, and they all shared their patents with each other to solve this crisis. By 1944, they were able to produce over 800,000 tons of synthetic rubber per year. The women that were left behind during the war stepped up to solve the skilled labor shortage and began working as fabricators, welders, machinists, assembly line workers, and mechanics. This is where Rosie the Riveter comes from. For the production of the B-29 bomber alone, women accounted for over 30% of all the workers involved. The aircraft industry produced around 6,000 planes per year and employed around 45,000 people in 1939. In 1944, this increased to 96,000 planes and over 2.1 million employees. By the end of the war, Ford Motors alone had built 86,865 complete aircraft, 57,851 plane engines, 277,896 military vehicles, and 4,291 military gliders. Philip McKenna's cutting tool company, McKenna Metals, had 12 employees and a first year sales of $30,000. By the end of World War II, the new company, now renamed Kenna Metal, had annual sales approaching $10 million and over 900 employees. 
America had successfully mobilized the most successful wartime industrial effort in history. Combined, we manufactured over 300,000 aircraft, 100,000 tanks, and over 2 million machine guns. Many common manufacturing tools and common everyday items were born during and immediately after the war. In 1946, a German tool and die maker named Kurt Cuban, who had left Germany in 1923, started a machine shop. There, he developed a work holding tool that we know today as the Kurt Weiss. The Jeep was developed and produced starting in 1940. Even things like the world's first electronic computer, the first jet engine, mass-produced penicillin, flu vaccine, super glue, duct tape, silly putty, and the slinky were breakthroughs born from this war effort. It's important to take a look at history so that we understand how we got to where we're at today. And today, 77 years later, the world has become smaller than ever, and every single day I talk to amazing people from all over the world. And it turns out that most people want the same thing, to protect and provide for themselves and their families, and manufacturing can help us do exactly that. So the next time you hear about a supply chain crisis or skills gap or labor shortage, start thinking of ways to get around them. Remember that you just might be the next hero of manufacturing and the innovations that you come up with could literally end up saving lives. Thanks for watching and while you're here, check out one of our other videos like these.